Thank you, Speaker. When I sat there, listened to the long speech made by the Minister, I can't help feeling that while we are here to say that there are some reasons to believe that the system is being politicised by the PAP, he in turn to say that we are trying to politicise the whole system. But I think he has not answered the questions that we have raised or the doubts we have raised. Why are system, electoral system or electoral boundary drawing has given rise to a number of phenomena or a number of things that we think is not normal. We will only be convinced unless the minister can explain why this thing has happened. So I have a few to, illiter to, uh, to reiterate what my colleague <coughs> Hazel Poir and the LO and uh, Jamers have probably also raised already. But I hope to raise a few questions and if the minister can answer convincingly why this is so, then he will have a stronger case to say that we are politic politicizing uh, uh, this whole debate. Firstly, if he says that there's no uh, gerrymandering, I think we have to look at all these examples. So firstly, can you explain why, if there's no gerrymandering, then why our constituency borders, the shape of our constituencies, some of them are very odd shape. Even he agrees, the minister agrees, that it is better to have a more compact shape, a compact shape uh, because you know the, the residents in, in the same areas should have a better uh, environment to mix with one another. And of course, from an economics perspective, to maintain a constituency that's more compact, it is far more economical, far more economical. So why are some of our constituency so out shape? Like the constituency I'm living in, Brother Heights, Mr. Speaker's constituency. Why Brother Hyde is under Marine Parade, miles away? <clears throat> My second question. The minister also mentioned that the result of our constituency or, or uh, the results of our cons the, the, the constituency is, or the shape, uh, the, the current um, uh, area of our constituency may be due to the urban planning that we have been doing. Yes, if that is the case, like what my colleague and other speakers have uh, pointed out just now, why then one HDB flat, uh, one HDB town, is divided, subdivided among so many constituencies. We would have expect that if the urban planning is being done properly, then one HDB town will more or less be inside one constituency. That is the second question I want the minister to ask. And third, if there's no gerrymandering, then why so many Singaporeans, although they have lived in the same place all his life, but he have experienced more than two times changing of constituencies. Why is that so? And fourth, what explain then the disappearing of the SMCs, you know, who have done, uh, who have, uh, uh, whereby the oppositions have done uh, fairly well in an election. And lastly, if there's no gerrymandering and no other political intentions, then whenever that there's a huge increase in population in one place, 
leading to a decline in the weightage of one vote. That means the discrepancy of the votes. We can actually address it quite speedily. Why is that not addressed? Instead, our EBRC guidelines have been increased over the years, you know, from 20% uh, uh, to 30%. Why is there a need to do that? So these are the questions, sir. If the minister can answer them convincingly, then I think we can carry on with this debate and in more good faith. Thank you. Sir, I'd like to make one point, and that the minister did not really answer the questions uh, that I've asked. But OK, I, I, I just take it as that. But he's pointing out that today's debate is about the process. I think it's not just about the process. It's about whether the current system is the most desirable system for the development of a federal electoral system in Singapore. So I, don't, I can't imagine a situation where us, especially the Prime Minister who appoint the EBRC, and also including all of us, we would accept a process that leads to an outcome that we find that is not desirable. And that desirability is not measured by political considerations. Like, for example, whether you know, it, is, it is good for opposition or good for the ruling party. But uh, we can use certain parameters, like what Professor uh, 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 James Lim has said. Uh, we can use certain parameters. Like, for example, we should stipulate to the EBRC that preferably we want the constituency to be... Mr. Leung, you, want to, you should make another speech. You can ask your clarifications to, directly to Minister Chan. Yeah, yeah so we, we can, give, uh, a, we can uh, give a parameter to the EBRC that we want uh, the constituency to be more compact. So given that, does the minister agree that it's not just about the process that we are arguing today, it is about the outcome? And this outcome is not necessarily uh, be a political outcome that we are, we are aiming for. We are talking about a more rational uh, uh, boundary drawing in Singapore. Thank you. Minister Chan. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'll just make one comment in response. I'm glad that Mr. Leong says that we are here to talk about the process and not the outcome. Maybe Mr. Leong can clarify what does outcome means. Is outcome the boundaries or is outcome whether a certain party, a certain candidate win or lose? If the pro outcome that we are desiring is a set of boundaries that the public servants who have done their work professionally and objectively come up with to the best of their ability, then that is the outcome. If the outcome is about whether a certain party win or lose, then I'm sorry to say that my public officers should not be made responsible for such outcome. Is the EBRC responsible for Workers' Party winning Sengkang in the last GE? Do we pin that outcome on the EBRC? No, certainly not. The EBRC's outcome is a set of boundaries, Sengkang Town. Ultimately, Sengkang voters choose who they want to represent them. But sir, if I may just move one step back. As I to reiterate this point. The mark of success for any political system is not what rules it has. That is part of it. The mark of success of how we evaluate a political system is whether it is fit for purpose, it commands the trust and respect of its people so that the country can progress together. Very often, perhaps in this chamber, we are all very seized with who win, who lose. At the end of the day, it must be Singapore and Singaporeans who win. It must be that we have a functioning parliament that can produce good governance in service of our people and nation. And it is on that note, and that is 
the real outcome that we are looking for. The outcome is not whether your party wins or my party wins. It's whether Singapore wins. Mr. Leong, should be a clarification. Thank you. Uh, sir, I think the minister keeps saying that we are aiming for a political outcome. Can I ask the minister that did we propose anything that is targeted at aiming for a, politi a, partic uh, a particular political outcome? We didn't propose any of that. And we don't know what will be the political outcome because it all depends on the electorate. But we have proposed concrete ideas as to why we think the electoral boundary should be drawn with more objective parameters. And I pointed one just now to you, that can we give the parameter to the EBRC that we want more compact constituencies? So I want the minister to, to confirm whether the, we actually aim for a political outcome in our debate today. Or did we actually put up ideas to say that we are asking for a, a, a more objective way of drawing the boundaries? Thank you. Mr. Leong, maybe you should also respond to Minister's questions to you so that we can progress the, and come to a finality on the debate. Uh, may I ask the, the Minister what was the question he has posed to me? Did he say a process or outcome, is it? I think he mentioned about the, your definition of outcome. Yeah. Yeah, so I have already, uh, sir, I've already said the outcome is a, a more objective way of uh, drawing our boundaries with certain parameters, not necessarily politically uh, motivated. We don't know what will be the political results, but definitely we would like to see, for example, our constituencies being more compact, where the residents of one constituency are living closer to one another, like now I move, I live in Bradder High, I don't know my fellow constituencies in the far end of the other uh, part of Marine Parade, for example. We can go on and on, you know, and I'm sure uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can provide more parameters, but just answer me, this parameter, this parameter is what I mean by uh, uh, um, the uh, outcome that we are aiming for. Minister Chen. Mr. Speaker, sir, I think we are going round and round in circles. I'm thoroughly confused now as to whether the member is suggesting that the Prime Minister give more specific instructions to the EBRC or the member would like the Prime Minister to allow EBRC to do its work objectively with some basic instructions. Because it sounds like now we have to have the Prime Minister tell the EBRC the definition of compactness. And it sounds like we want the Prime Minister to give the EBRC even more specific instructions. And I'm sure if the Prime Minister does that, the Prime Minister will be accused of interfering unnecessarily in the process of EBRC. So I think the Prime Minister will do what he needs to do to give the broad outlines and guidelines to the EBRC, and we will leave the EBRC to do their work professionally and objectively. Sometimes, the more we interfere, the more we fall into this trap to make it a politically motivated process. And if Mr. Leong says that you are not concerned about the political outcome, we thank you, then we also thank you for allowing the EBRC to do their work professionally and objectively.